Greetings everyone and welcome to another Midnight Hunt draft. At this time it is a best of three traditional draft. Okay, so again there's a Burly Breaker which I just am a big fan of. Although it is a 5 mana card, a bit clumsy, maybe just a creature that can be even jump blocked uh, pretty easily. The rare is 1 mana 2-1. Yeah, it's okay, but how about the commons here? I don't think the commons are really worth for, uh, first picking here, and the other two uncommons are not as good as the Burly Breaker. The Vampire Interloper is a, I mean, if I'm aggressive Vampire deck, maybe this could be even better the Interloper than the... Oh, wait a second. Then something is wrong with this system. I can't actually choose the interloper here for some reason. What? I'll take the rare, but I uh, need to see if something is... Okay, I don't know what happened there, but I literally wasn't able to even pick the interloper. No, I wouldn't have picked that. I don't know what that was all about. I thought it was something with the recording system that some, some kind of an overlay would have prevented me from picking a card. But now I can pick cards from the middle of the pack. I'm very happy there wasn't anything I actually wanted to pick there. Um, yeah, well, anyway, let's get back to business. So uh, I do think that um, if I want to be an aggressive deck, the 1-1-2-1 one, one, one might be slightly more interesting. Anyway, of course, I'm just have picked only one card. I'm not. I don't know if I'm going to be an aggressive deck or not. Now there's a Falcon Abomination, which is of course uh, in the maybe the. I mean, at, at least in a very deep color in this set. Blue is very good. Yeah, there's the Contortionist Troupe, which I do like. Uh, but there's a Sister Storm. Could I pick it now? I, I don't know. Maybe I'll just take the Abomination. If blue is open, it's gonna be great. If not, well. So be it. Well, at least I tried. Mm -hmm. There is a Famished for Rages. I like it quite a bit. There's also a Covered Cut Purse. Well, there's a Startle which I'm not taking here. So maybe, I mean, her red is open here. I have first big red card. Do I take the 5 mana removal here? I don't think so. The Famished for Rages probably is if I just can be the kind of a deck that makes the opponent lose life rather consistently. This will be an excellent card. So I think I'll take the 4 drop here now. It's not a. I mean, it has a. The pack has a lot of uh, decent quality cards that are very close to each other. I think the Cut Purse is more interesting, but I'm not sure if I'm black, uh, red, black. I could be red something else too. So I, w I don't want to commit to black quite yet. Um, abandon the post. Probably a good card if I'm super aggressive. The Vengeful Strangler, it's a 2 mana 2 one that cannot block. When this thing dies, it will be becoming an enchantment or that enchants opponent's creature or placewalker. And then they probably sacrifice that this thing. Yeah, I don't think it's that great, but maybe it's worth trying. I don't really want to pick another 4-drop right away, although the 4 rages is the kind of 4-drop this deck mostly probably wants. Uh, but I'll try this uncommon. I, I don't know how good it can be, so I can test to see how it goes. And now I see a bunch of blue cards, although not that amazing necessarily. With the red aggressive card here, I'll just take the Voldemort Stinger. I think that is the kind of a key common for this at uh, this kind of an archetype. Now I could take yet another Famished for Rages. There's nothing in black, nothing in blue I care about. There is a good white card in the Adrix Outrider. I could take that. It's not too late to go red white, although I do like the uh, Evolving Wilds too, of course. Mm. But this is quite good. So I think I'll take this if I can be a red white aggressive deck I will. Now, another Evolving Wilds says also an Arrogant Outlaw, which wouldn't be that bad in this kind of a deck. But there's an Ambitious Farmhand, he's really good. Uh, two mana, one one that gets you another planes and then you can make it into a 3-3, three, three, which shouldn't be usually that hard 
hitting the common and this nicely but it's a double caster to make it you know a 3-3 but then again this does get you another planes and you, you already had one white source when you cast this so it's not really a big deal i think i'll take this and try to be maybe red and white here okay well there's this thing actually not that bad even a 2-3 menace is pretty decent in the red black uh, archetype because you can you know it's easier to connect damage to it to the opponent with this thing there's also an organ holder here why it just could be the best common in the set I'm really, really not understanding why that's here. But I think I have I picked those white cards. I'll take another Outrider. I won't be needing any more white cards, though. I, I can take the Sun Gold Barrage for sideboard. It's, uh, sorry, did I say white cards? Yes, I did. I meant, of course, four mana cards. Uh, because I have already four, uh, three four mana cards I'm willing to play. But they are, this pack is really bad for me. So I'll take the Sun Gold Barrage, which is good sideboard card this is a best of three draft and here uh, pretty easy only card i can even think about playing is the uh, search party captain i will ignore the black and blue for now but of course i still have the option to uh, switch some color here if i open something crazy good in pack number two for instance or something crazy good is getting passed to me i have here basically three red cards and four white cards and none of them is really like a first pick quality card which is kind of sad uh, but these are still fine cards to you know build the deck around i just need a lot more cheap cards um the revelry is interesting but i think i'm not going to just pass another evolving bulge i just want to make the mana work this is not bad at all but the, this is just too too easy of a pick this will be making the deck no matter what it will be uh, looking like in the end um uh, which is the thing i guess i'll take the blood pact for not i mean would i play this main deck if i'm red black i could i could maybe they're losing two life won't matter too much and you can always sideboard it out but currently i'm not playing black uh, so i put it to the sideboard for now um okay field of ruin well there's not really a rare land in this well i guess there's like a hostile hostel Let's take the mask then. <laughs> that might be more valuable as a sideboard card than the field of ruin. All right, so not a very exciting pack one. I wonder what would have happened if I took the uh, the five drop. I at least would have gotten a, a troupe, and I guess I would be getting another troupe now. There's a pretty good blue and red card, but that would mean uh, ignoring all the white I have picked, and I have only the falcon abomination here. Now it is still a consideration. Hmm. But what else does the pack have? Not a lot, actually, for my colors here. Like there is a Ritual Guardian, which I would play, but it's not really that amazing at all. I don't need another Sun Gold Barrage. And Homestead Courage, I just don't think it's very playable. There is a black card, but it's, it's yet another 4-drop here. I think I'm taking the Skr Skrillex here and seeing what, going, what goes on. If, I, if Blue is like open to this direction, who knows, maybe I move to uh blue and red and <laughs> look at all this black here Take a couple of decent uncommons sorry not black but what why can't i <laughs> uh say the correct colors anyway a couple of good green uncommons here and then there's a pestilent wolf completely acceptable two drop here for green but there's a one acceptable two drop for me here which i'm taking over the neonates rush or the forages or something like that um, i guess i'll still try the red white but i'm not too excited about the quality of cards for my colors at least not so far and then there's stuff like olivia's midnight ambush here passed over Cathar's call immolation i don't know how good the immolation is but lunar veteran has proven to be pretty um good card for what it does i mean it is only a one mana one one but then it can be a two mana one mana flyer and the life cane is suddenly uh, surprisingly relevant in this format so i think i'll take the veteran i just maybe want one drops in general and the flying part is good in connecting for stuff like the famished forages or other vampires i might be getting here so yeah let's take the white one drop here now over the immolation i haven't really seen a lot of red after picking these cards in pack one or maybe i have seen but i have not picked them not sure how i should 
feel about that. But anyway, here I'm gonna feel about borrowed, borrowed time. Another decent white card for this deck might be the Ritual of Hope. And then there's a Candle Trap, which is definitely fine, but this is high quality removal spell. I'm going to take the one now. Okay, so I'm not getting actually any red cards from this pack either. Then again, I don't need them. I can take the Candle Grow Witch and that's all, all good here. It's definitely the kind of two drop I want to be having. Um, yeah, I kind of moved from red to red black, tried some blue to then got those all those white cards and then there's just no, no red coming at least in this direction. Let's see how the colors go because I can easily ignore and abandon all the red cards here. The problem is I don't know what to replace it with it. I don't think there's enough cards for a mono white deck. That would be interesting though. Uh, but uh, am I going to take and abandon the post or just take the Sadie Traveler, which would be like okay for black and white. I guess I'm gonna take it because I don't really care about the abandon the post that much. I might be white black here still. Although now there is well, there is another ritual of hope, arrogant outlaw and an immolation here. I have to make a decision with my colors now. I don't have really three top creatures at all. Arrogant Outlaw would help in there a bit. Shady Traveler too. Maybe I'm actually moving away from red. They are not that exciting cards. Just for curve reasons. Yeah, okay, let's take this card and uh, <laughs> I guess I'll move black and white here. Might be a mistake though. Um, this is not that exciting. The Gabon and Silversmith, if I'm abandoning red, I don't have any or black four drops. So yeah, I can take the silversmith. It is pretty decent card, I think. So let's just get rid of all this. That was a weird draft, I think. Well, I'm taking these just because it's a three drop. I still want to have them. It's not a great one, but it's playable. All right, so and all of this came back. Yeah, sure. I'll take the abandon the post if I'm going to make another switcheroo. Okay, that's a trick I could play. All right, how, what else? Black four. Okay, candle trap, pretty late actually. Brimstone Vandal, if I would, would be white red, two or three menis, it's not that great rate though. Okay, Sage Traveler, uh, Wenchful Stronger, at least I might be able to test this thing now for real. Uh, that, that's not a lot of, <laughs> not a lot of uh, black cards in the end. Yeah, this deck doesn't actually seem very good, but at least the curve is fine now. I just need to, I hope at least one of these colors will be open in pack 3. I guess white was so wide open in pack 2 that I can assume it to be open in pack 3 no matter which direction the pack, packs come from. White seems to be pretty uh, open here. I guess the blood pack is something I could play. Okay, now, now that there's at least the first pick quality card here in the rare here. Brutal Cathar is a good card and it also I still don't mind having a 3 drop here so that's pretty nice. Uh, not really much reason to think about anything else in this pack. I guess I could take one of those five drops because of five power, sorry, a three power five drop uh, could really be a card this deck can use. All right, so now how aggressive I want to be. I'm definitely taking a black card in here because I think the interloper for this deck might be more interesting than the Cathar Commando. It cannot block, but I think I'm a bit on the aggressive side in here. So let's take the interloper here. This is nice but quite slow also. So uh, let's just uh, take it. And black white it is. Well there are some nice cards for other colors. Um, but I guess the Gabonet Trapper especially as a one-off and do I have some common here? Yeah I do have some. It's not really a big part of the deck but uh, for example the ambitious farmhand wouldn't mind having a zero power creature around to help help um, getting the coven active. Did I have a... Okay, I guess I'll put the blood pack there for now. Now the sideboard, I think, do I want to play the hedge, which is mask? Don't necessarily want to play the main deck. I can play the blade brand though. I have a lot of small creatures, so this can, you know, make... at least make my small creatures trade with their stuff without me losing a card in the process. 
I don't really need a sacrifice outlets, so the no is a cultist. Probably isn't what I'm looking for here. There's another heirloom mirror here. There's also another city traveler. There's also a seat zombie, which I would take over the novice occultist. Clarion Cathars. Maybe I don't need a four drop here. I don't actually. So pay life, discard a card, draw a mill. Okay, so discard to draw basically. And then after the third time, this becomes a four four flyer. Now that's somewhat interesting actually. Maybe more interesting than the Shady Traveler number number two here. I will play that uncommon thing. A 4-4 flyer and also it has an activated ability. That's no uh, that's not really nonsense either, so let's try that. Uh, do I have a lot of zombies? I don't think. Well, exactly zero. So another party captain, Loyal Grief, could be picked too now. I'm not sure how um, Consistent this is to It's just a 2-2 two, two even if it draws a card. I guess I'll take the flyer now Somehow feels like it's what I want to have. Okay, so Gavin is silversmith or the bat whisperer I guess the silversmith is just um now this I don't think is for this deck I want to try this sometimes too, but I'm not really sure if I can get enough value of those two twos um, Okay, I'll take the silversmith. I, I like it more than the 4-2 here Sun Gold Barrage as a second. I can have another one for the sideboard. This can be really good against certain decks. And I have a Duress in my sideboard too. I'm really unlikely to sideboard in two. I could play two of these Griffs, maybe one in the main deck, but we'll see. Only on color card. Don't think I want to main deck it though. Um, I don't care about this. I'm not. I mean, it would be weird case if I play the stuffed bear, but who knows? Maybe opponent has a rat effect. I can play this, and then you know it survives a rat effect, and then I have a four-four, like a very, very unlikely scenario. But who knows? Maybe it can happen. Don't think I like the blessed defiance enough to play it in the main deck. I actually have twenty-three cards in here, some not so strong ones also. Maybe the flare of fate isn't that great. How many humans I have? Well, that's fourteen. It's gonna actually pump most of my creatures with the better mode and the plus two plus two is you know acceptable when i target non-humans but plus three plus three and indestructible okay i got another one of those might still be i mean it's it's of course usually worth two mana if you are you know interested in combat tricks in general and i probably am because my creatures are so small so let's see, white, black, and colorless are the cards I'm interested in here. Um, okay, I don't think I'm gonna main deck the mask. Uh, the blessed defiance is too random, a uh, low impact. I will play one grief in the main deck, main deck, and that's it. Okay, and I don't need this kind of two drop. It has only one power, and I don't have a really a good way to benefit from uh, you know sacrifice fodder so i think i won't be moving any of these cards in the main deck i will have one cut to make here though um how many black cards it is it is still seven so i will probably play with this configuration of lands seven swamps nine planes and the evolving wilds seems pretty okay because i want to play my Black two drop creatures, especially on turn two, whenever I happen to have them available. So the creature count is 18, non creature 6, although this non creature will turn into a creature given enough time. What is the worst card? I guess the Ritual Guardian is the card I'm least interested in. I might actually play the Blood Pact and both of the search party captains. Wait a minute, did I not? Pick the grief after all. Where's my? I did not. What did I pick over the first grief? I, I think I passed one, but then I thought I picked another one, but something else was picked instead. I'm, <laughs> I don't know what I did, but no big deal. I think I'm still wanting to play one. Maybe I accidentally moved it to the sideboard or something like that, but I thought I had two of these griefs. Because I said I will take the second one for my sideboard, but I don't know, maybe I misclicked or something. Oh, now I see. It was this loyal grief. 
man, it's not the first time. Well, look at the art. I guess, does it, this is a spirit and this is, okay, so it, it has to be the same creature. Let's see the uh, flavor text. Silver streak had lost her rider, but not her instinct to help humankind. Kind, okay. Okay, well, I guess it could be the same creature, but at least it looks like the same. So, whenever I picked this, I thought it was the 3, 4, four 5. But, you know, this is a good card, so I'm actually happier it went this way. But I think I'll play one, one of these creeps. So, what I'm not gonna play here, I guess I could, and I will cut the Ritual Guardian. That is the least interesting card, at least in the main deck. This lifelink can be relevant uh, when you're racing, so this could be a good sideboard card. Uh, but I will cut that from the main deck. I have here enough to drop, so I think I'll play the Flare of Faith here. And the Mirror here, I will want to play with the Vengeful Strangler too. Uh, the Blood Pact, it is definitely a cuttable card. Um, I think the final card is between one Search Party Captain and one Blood Pact. Now, both are kind of two for ones. Um, maybe I do like the creature slightly more. Uh, because I should be fairly often be able to play this for 3 mana. And I think I'd rather have a 3 mana 2 to that and a card than just uh, 2 cards and losing 2 life. So let's cut the blood pact, at least from the main deck. And this is this is the mana base, right? Yep. With the double... Gavin and Silversmith and double Odrix Outrider. Getting the Coven uh, trigger for my few Coven cards shouldn't be that hard. I can spread around the counters in a way that's, you know, most reasonable to achieve Coven. All right, let's do it. I can't, I must say I'm not that excited about the deck, but at least there are a few uncommons I still want to test how good they actually are, because I'm not sure how to evaluate cards like the the artifact that you know first uh, rummages and then becomes into a four four becomes a four four creature with flying. Hmm. Well, I have the farm hand here, and it. Maybe, well, okay, probably I won't be playing these particular cards unless I do. I'm, I'm still keeping it. I have three Lancer 2 drop and decent continuation, but definitely this is, a, a, you know, this is a triple 4 drop hand, even though these things can be cheaper. Now that's a, that's interesting at least. This can attack even, uh, but of course I'm not attacking with it now. But if opponent misses their curve play somehow, I might be able to... Okay, so... That was good. That they have nothing there. I play the farmhand, get my... Planes here, and now I do have the zero power creature here. And one power creature, so this will be... I'm very close to common now. Okay, they have only that, so I'm gonna actually be able to play the search party captain for two mana. Sadly, unless I draw one of my few one mana spells that's all i can do but it's still okay i won't be having mana for the tapper anyway so let's do this first might also draw the evolving wild so there's no reason to play the land first so opponent had a very slow start but now they are playing five drops and i can do what exactly? I can use the Flare of Faith here. Transform. Oh, I can activate this as a um, instant speed effect. But I don't actually have mana to activate it and and also I use the Flare of Faith. So, and if I use it without activating, it's only becoming a 4-4 uh, so all I actually can do here, sadly, is attack with the captain here. I would like to attack just to make this captain a 2-mana card, and uh, whatever, I'm not gonna do this anyway, just... Maybe they block. 
who knows if I'm lucky I play loot block. Alright, I'm, I'm happy to get rid of this guy. And that means I can still play the mirror actually, or leave this thing up for tapping is. But I think the mirror is the more reasonable thing to do. I do want to have my 4-4 four, four flyer. It only costs one mana though, the activation. Mana wise it's pretty cheap. It just takes a bunch of time. Right, they have a Sunrise Cavalier. They, they are playing, of course, three colors. They have the land fetch thing here. Well, nothing I can do about that. So whenever it becomes day or night, uh, it, this will uh, distribute counters. It's not great. And this is Werewolf too. So I definitely don't want to... Well, definitely I'm not making a day happen. Uh, sorry, night happen, because I have stuff I can play here. Also, do have my Tapper here. So maybe they will not realize that the farmhand can do a thing instant speed. So let's attack now. I think I want to have my life linker here. Okay, let's do it. But I will want to play a spell here. Which I actually can't do now. I just said, <laughs> oh man, oh man, I just said, I just said I will play spells here every turn and then I didn't realize that this is still a three mana card. Oh man, I can't even use both the Elem Mirror and this Tapper, so I, wow, this was bad. This becomes a 4-4, four, four. this gives a counter. This three uh, lifelink wasn't worth it. I made, I messed up here. I think I'd just rather have this happen. I, I can still draw my uh, one drop white card. That would be great. Did not. Yeah, that, that was... <laughs> okay. I, dis I do have a couple of silversmiths here. Not so bad. But I mean, they, they have very big creatures here now. And um, they are winning the race currently. Although I have a 3-3. Three, three. Life linker, so if they attack with both, I think I take seven. I could take even nine or you know eleven if they have instant or sorceries for this thing. But again, okay, another thing which is you know the same is the same stuff there. It's night here, so I'm gonna double spell right. They're gonna use the cavalry. The cavalry is annoying. Maybe I'm not double spelling here. But I'm gonna discard. I'm going to discard something for sure. I think the silversmith is going to give a counter to um, the Cathar, definitely. Because can I double spell here? I actually cannot unless I sacrifice stuff here. I also want to use this to get my flyer here. I'm gonna get four life here, unless they have an instant speed effect. Well, that would be just game over then. If they can block with this and make this into a five six, that's game over, and I will accept that. Um, so I'm thinking about the silversmith and activation of the mirror. Sadly, no double spelling, but I guess they won't get the trample. Uh, sorry, the counter from this thing at least. So let's activate it first, and I think it's gonna be the search party captain. I might be interested in the life loss here. Okay, so do I play my land? I think I will play the land. I might need all the mana I have here available. Who is going to get the other counter, even if I give it to the search... Oh, they have an instant speed effect there, by the way. Ah, oh, that's bad. I guess I'll give it to the silversmith itself, but... Ah, uh, yeah, they have something. But can I really not attack here? Yeah, that's game over. I messed up. I shouldn't have made it night. But the Sun Gold Barrage, this will be good against that deck. So there is that. How about the Hedge Witch's Mask? This, well, with power 4 or greater, they still can have a lot of creatures that don't have 4 power. So I don't think it's a very good card. Definitely not sideboarding it in right now. How about the other cards? I think the two twos that draw a card are not that good. I'm going to cut one of them. And then, of course, I will cut something else. I still like the Lunar Words around here. I think 
think I'm just gonna ignore this second captain as well. Let's do it like this. Okay, well that's a curve of some kind, depending on if they're gonna have a target for the Sun Gold Barrage. Okay, they did mulligan, but then again they they are okay, they are at five now. But yep, they have three colors, so that will cause bad starting hands, of course. That's the reason I usually refrain from splashing unless it's something very, very good and I have good fixing because it's not fun to mulligan. By the way, they have actually a 42 card deck because now they have a 35 cards in the deck while they still have 7 cards in their hand. Yeah, they have a 42 card deck. That does increase the inconsistency a bit too. But that didn't prevent them from winning. Of course, I did mess up with the knight change there. That's pretty good. Um, I'm gonna steal just aggress here. So if I don't play a spell here, that's going to mean this is they're gonna discard up to two, then draw. Okay, and when it's night, their stuff is gonna be bigger, but that could be a good thing with the Sun Gold Barrage. So I think I'm going to. Because am I going to candle trap this guy? They did mulligan the five. I should be in a fairly good shape. If they just discard two to draw two. They still don't net any cards there. They might need all the cards in their hand. So... I'm gonna offer the trade here and if they... Okay, well they just block so that that's the, that solves that. But it's still night now. That means they don't get this trigger but their werewolves are big. Okay, so more lands. Now they did mulligan the five but they found all the basics even without the path to the festival. But they get the scry now. Um, well... Okay, the interloper is good, so you... Well, next turn I might play the... Well, I kind of want to play just the creep here, but let's see what's, how, how big of a creature they have now. Well, they have the ward 3-1, so... I could use the candle trap, but maybe I'll just take 8 damage once, and then I can play the sun gold barrage, because I want to attack with my... Flyers, because if I do this, that's... Well, I mean, it's still using 4 out of my 5 mana. And then I don't have to use the Barrage on the Dire Strain Demolisher. Then again, if I, then again, if I want it to become an... No, I, no, no, I, I, I don't. I think... I mean, if I want it to become a day, I should double spell, but I have no capability of doing so. In any reasonable manner, at least. Um, because I can, of course, <laughs> play the barrage, not pay for the ward, but yeah, anyway, that's just stupid. Uh, okay, fine, I'm doing this. Yes, yes. I will pay you all that. And uh, they won't be able to attack, and they all the damage they deal with this thing will be zero. Well, will be prevented, rather. Um, so I don't care about if they can attack or not because they won't be dealing any damage. But point is, my uh, this is a very good blocker still, and of course I can exile it at some point. Okay, they do have fixing for that th for their three color mana base at least. But they are my threats are flyers, so the ground guy defender, big toughness creature doesn't matter. And at some point I will be able to exile it uh, with the candle trap. Unless they have something like a Cathar Commando of their own, they can destroy the Candle Trap. But I still have the Barrage and no targets for it. They have an instant of some kind, they just were wondering what they should do with it. Oh, well, I guess. We'll see at some point. Um, I do have the thing that says... I mean, the, the black artifact that makes me discard cards to draw cards. I think I shouldn't play any more lands because I have a fairly low curve. I, of course, can play any spell I draw. The, the only thing that will punish me right now... I should actually get rid of the flashback card, right? Um, the only thing that can punish me right now, if I draw exactly a... Uh, a uh, four mana card next, and I want to also cast uh, that and the Sun Gold Barrage. 
Okay, fine. If there's a there's a bigger chance I'm drawing a four mana card than that I'm gonna draw the. Well, I guess if I draw the black artifact in next five draws, I might have wanted to keep the land in there, but I guess I'll find other lands there. And I still have the one, and I won't be discarding that. Okay, Sunrise Cavalier. Well, if it gives a trample to, uh, sorry, a counter to itself, I will be able to kill it. They might go for a double spell because they have still something. And if they double spell, that will mean that uh, it will be a day and this will get a, give a counter to someone. I assume it's gonna be itself. So they have a sacred fire. Well, that's really sad that they played that before I had the grief here. The thing has tremble. Well, I had a blocker for that. Okay, anyway. Wow, I'm flooding out here. So the, the sacred fire would have been something I could get rid of with the Griff, but uh, given my lands, the, actually the fact the opponent did mulligan to 5 doesn't matter currently because uh, uh, the, lands, the extra lands I have drawn are basically evening things up here. Well, they can use that, they get the scry there. Well, this thing is definitely far from over. At least I draw, draw another creature that is capable of getting flying. But it also just gets killed by the Sacred Fire, but I'm not gonna... Yeah, I guess I could have saved it for a double spell purposes, but look at this stuff. Can't even attack with this because I didn't draw a creature, although most of my creatures would have such power that Coven wouldn't have happened. But yeah, this 9 lands, 6 spell, yeah, this really is 6 spells and 9 lands. Not good. This thing has Vigilance, so I need to find... Well, no, no, they have a Sacred Fire. They're gonna go to 11, kill the Witch, no matter what. So... Yep. <laughs> Alright. Okay, then. Well, that was... That was that. I guess I could <laughs> play one land now. They they have even a kill spell on the grief, or do they just? Yeah, they have a deal for dominance. I wish I had my sun gold barrage. That would have actually been able to save me, kill this, and get rid of the deal for dominance at the same time. Yeah, that would have been very good draw. Well, at least. Okay, they have this. They have a werewolf deck. I don't really see. Are they just splashing for the sacred fire and the sunrise cavalier? Yeah, they. <laughs> okay. Yep. Let's draw a land here still. No, the mirror. Yeah, I can't draw anything with it. I can't play and draw a card. But go to two life, but then the sacred fire alone will kill me. That was. Uh, well, my deck isn't really good, but um, especially with that amount of lands, there was nothing I could do against a deck that has only big creatures, because the way to win in that matchup is, of course, hit my curve and uh, have my few flyers there, maybe. I have a couple of removal spells, especially after sideboarding, so uh, if I drew a regular mix of lands and spells, I think there was a, it was a pretty even matchup, perhaps. But I did also make a... A fairly stupid mistake in game one there, so don't really feel like I deserved a victory there. Okay, so if I draw any land, the loyal grief will be a thing. Any creature, I don't have any enters the battlefield abilities to trigger. I think this is just too risky keep here. Yeah, the candle trap. Also can be played, but I don't know though. I like the mirror here. If I had the planes and a swamp, this would be an, of course a snap keep. This is the reason I do pick cards like, like I've always said, evolving wilds and such very high because these kind of starting hands are really, really. And nasty because if it just if I imagine if if I draw in next two draw steps a swamp, this is just a. I mean, all if if any land if I draw in any land, I would be in very good shape if I had both colors there. Uh, and even if I didn't draw a land and I had the place a swamp, this would be a decent hand. But 
if I don't draw like a even if it's like a plains and then no land in a while, I, I think it's mulliganing is very nasty and this can be useful cards early. I'm gonna keep it, but this is really high risk. I could just lose the game to not drawing a land. Really, you don't wanna be in that situation. And mulliganing to six isn't that bad of a situation, but I do have a curve of two, three if I happen to be super lucky, which I was. Now, I'm not playing the mirror quite yet. Uh, I just rather curve out with my flash creatures. Imagine if I'm elegant this. Uh, now I wouldn't have this actually pretty perfect situation here now. I could now play them. I, do I want to actually? Um, no, I think the flyer here is still better. They might have a 2 2 flyer that makes a zombie token, but I can trade with it. So let's just. um play the creep and then I can I'm not even sure if I want to discard the land here or so because of course you have to discard a card first all right well that is something I can deal with a blade brand but let's play the play the uh, flyer now decline this there's no point <laughs> bouncing that okay so I drew all these lands and actually three lands in three doorsteps when I have the hell Hel mirror here is not bad at all so I don't think I'm really, I mean, it would be possible to deal with this, with a combination of Candle Trap and a Blade Brand, but it's just not necessary. I'm going to actually do like this. Tapper went away. Well, I'm gonna play the land here yeah, still. Um, Sadie Traveler has menace. It will be a 4 for menace. It's quite good uh, when it's night. Uh, 3 mana, 4 for menace. Yeah, this, I think this is one of the werewolves. It's not a red or green one, but this is something I do like. The, the kind of the floor of the card is a 3 mana, 2, 3 menace. It's not the most useless. Okay, they make it a night now. They of course get to do this tapping business. So whenever it becomes night or day, they can tap or untap, target non-land permanent. Sure, they can do that. But now I have a 4-4 many sky, unless they have a... <laughs> they could, of course, have a counter spell of some kind. Which is really annoying. Because they are having some kind of an instant. I really don't want to lose the Sadie Traveler here. But what else there is to do? I don't want to attack into this thing, use a Blade Brand or Flare of Fate, which they're gonna counter. I guess I have both of them available. Oh, it's really nasty, actually. Fine, let's play this and let's make them use their counter spell, which I assume they have. But they don't. Well, this is a sorcery speed activation, yes. So I'm going to discard. Flare of Fate, Blade Brand. I guess it's gonna be the Blade Brand. Doesn't seem, although it is good with menace now that you think of it, but well, it is too late really. Too late now. Maybe they have a kill spell on this anyway. Okay, Adric's Outrider. That's a good one. So they should have like a draw, draw spell, a kill spell. They can bounce that. I will have to put it on top or bottom. Uh, I want to draw it again. Now if they double spell, they get to trigger this thing again. And then it, this will be a smaller creature. That's locked in the cemetery. Well, I can. That's a good use for the uh, Cathar Commander, actually. And they did do double spell here. So they can tap or untap anything. Can even attack for one here. They can also tap the heirloom mirror here. Because then, because I, I can only use it as a sorcery speed thing. But they choose to do that. So I'm going to make my 4 4 flyer pretty surely. And then I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to discard the flare of faith, I think. There's no point using the Cathar Commando anytime soon here. I'd rather play my Traveler and... 
you know, I don't like the instant speed tricks against blue black which has a lot of instant speed interaction so now this will be a flyer won't it it will be tapped of course all right so there's a brutal cathar I'm not sure I want to I could eat one of the zombies it will they will never come back but I think I like just this better I can't even block one of the two twos if they choose to attack with them and I probably will if they have something like a blade brand then they do because if they do attack with all these I'm not taking six here for fun they do have a two two flutter they might be able to deal with my inherited fiend so exile target creature card from a graveyard so any even my creatures are good game here one two three so I can make this quite large so it all depends on whether they have an answer for it or not so they're gonna go for the attack with those things I'm gonna uh, prevent two damage and if they like I said if they have a card to deal with the traveler and then so be it. I will want to prevent the damage now. So what do they have? Nothing. Okay, it's night now, so my stalking predator is good, big now. Alright, so that gets tapped. I think I'm just gonna Brutal Cathar the Collector here. This also will be... Oh! It's night, so it will actually be the Moonrage Brute instead. It can't do anything, but when it becomes day, then, the, then it will exile stuff. So, but no, I won't be able to deal with this guy now. Which means that I think the Aud Audrix Outrider is the better thing to do. So let's play that pre-combat just in case they actually have some kill spell. They will want to use it before this hits the battlefield. Currently they only have a 2 power flyer. I don't have to worry about that too much. And if I want to end of their turn I can sacrifice my Cathar Commando to free up the Loyal Grief. So they do have a startle. Fine. That's okay. Don't care about that thing. They draw a card, prevent two damage basically, and get of course a decayed zombie, which is not very useful against the Artrix Outrider here. I can also, yeah, this will trigger, of course. Oh, this is the very good common. Uh, of course, the sacrificing the Cather Commander will give me a surprise. Well, so-called surprise, uh, plus one, plus one counter. If it's, of course, an onboard trick, they should be seeing, but they might not see it. Although currently it doesn't seem like it will be very relevant because... Okay, they can bounce that thing. Well, that's it's a bad sad because it comes back as a Illuminor. I think I'm gonna... The bounce spells, I, this is the second one I saw already. They do have a counter spell too. So that means I'm gonna sideboard this thing out. It's a really bad deal to go through all the work and then get it bounced so I'm going to yeah I'm gonna give the loyal grief the counter to so they have this thing in here fine so let's sacrifice this to get rid of this and the grief gets a counter they get to they really are going with the. <laughs> they're gonna get the value from the component collector here, definitely, because of the day and night cycle. But now the brutal Cathar can take something, and it won't be the hoarder because I don't want them to re trigger their ability in there. So I don't actually have mana. I don't. I won't want to play the planes here because then because I want to discard it for sure. Hmm. So the Brutal Cathar is going to eat up the Collector here and then I can attack. This has many and the Organ Hoarder doesn't have a good block on the... This thing... Um, yeah, actually there's something I should consider here. The 
fact is that I take seven damage in here now. Oh yeah. I can trade with the hoarder here. I can use the candle trap. That's that's the thing I'm actually thinking about doing. I'm still not activating this, so I don't have to play it now. I maybe should have the candle trap here. Yep. This also makes me lose life, but also the this cut and draw won't be that bad. But I have to be very careful here. I might be going down to six right now. Of course, they won't have the organ holder. Sorry, the component collector and how available. So they won't be. Um, I have to take it. They won't be able to tap anything. But this is gonna be close now. Gale Drifter, even. Okay, that is really not good. Another abomination. Okay. So they were able to actually buy some time with the tapping effects to still be at 9. That is really, really bad for me. That's really bad for me. Yeah, only the backside has first strike. I don't even have a Oh, look at that. Two, 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 three. I don't have the candle trap here. Until it becomes night. Maybe I should force it into a night. I'm not exactly sure though. I can't attack with the grief. That I cannot do. Well, let's see how they block. Oh, if I attack with this guy, they can trade with it. But they would have to use a flyer for it. Um, I want to block the 2 2, but I have a candle crow witch, which I might. I'm, I'm taking here a lot of damage in the air, but I'm, I have to try to push here through. Okay, fine. I'm actually going to do it like this. If they want to trade a flyer here, I will accept that. I can just, you know, block with the hoarder here. I don't have to worry about the common now. So I could make it a knight, but I mean, I need a blocker here for sure now. Uh, can I even... Should I use this? Should I use it? I'm gonna play this anyway. This has to block the 2-2 two -two here, because I have to block the... Okay, so the thing is, if I go to 5, now I, have, I can't block the abomination. No, I can't. Yeah, now I can block the abomination and I can block the 2-2 two -two here with the Candle Grow Witch. If they attack with all. Of course, if they attack with all, they are going to be in trouble. But I don't think I want to find another card with this now. I'll still play it if I want to use it later on. But now um, I want to see what they do. If they drew just a land, I think I'm in a good shape. This does seem like they did draw something better than just a land. Wow, because all they had was the archivist here. If they, Because now they're done. Okay, they... Okay, well, let's see what they have. I get a counter here, which is going to be given to... Uh, I guess the menace guy, maybe? How do they deal with all this stuff? Okay, they don't. Maybe they counted the attack wrong. Oh, that was close. That was very close. So they are blue-black. They are arguably the best color combination in terms of card quality and synergy you can have. So they have a dissipate, they have these bounce effects. Um, locked in the cemetery. Okay, they have the these type creatures, of course, so I don't think I have any graveyard hate, any additional ones than what I'm already playing. But yes, the heirloom mirror goes away. And I will be playing instead. Even a Duras is actually interesting because there's some number of non creatures there that they are gonna hold up. But it's really just so nasty to play than see not only lands and creatures. 
could play the Ritual Guardian, they actually could make a difference now to um, get the Life Link occasionally. I am deciding between these Ritual Guardian, Dures, and something like a Blood Pact, which I don't think I'm gonna play here. Yeah, let's let's try the Life Link guy. Yes, that was a tight race there. It might become a race in the next game too. Is there something else I don't care about? I think I do like the other stuff in here. Even the Blade Brand, even though they have some instant speed interaction. But what I'm gonna do, like Bless Defiance, Hedge, Hedge which is Mask, not really. This won't have a target. Uh, I'm gonna do it like this now. Maybe if it goes to game 3, I can re reassess if I maybe want to have a duress, for instance. If I see more non creatures. Uh, this is nasty. Five lander, but the thing is, if I go to six, I might still just have three to two spells. I mean, I mean, the ideal case if I go to six is that I have still enough lands to play stuff. But if this hand draws me many lands in a row, I guess I'm gonna keep it, but I'm not such a big fan of this. Is yeah, if I do, okay, any, any spells, even this thing will be, you know, decent enough here. Just don't want to draw any too many lands here. In, uh, well, at least in the next f five turns or so, I want to be able to play spells. But yeah, I, I kept one, okay, that's really decent stuff. I kept, um... So they can have the minus two, minus zero oh thing. They can have the bounce spell. There's nothing I can do about anything now with the cards I have. So yeah, I kept the two lander that was risky. I drew the lands I needed, and then I <laughs> kept the five lander that so far has drawn me. So far has drawn me out. Oh. Spells. Okay, well now third one was a land. It's still okay. So what I'm doing here is. I'm going to attack and they will take the damage. And then I will play the Arrogant Outlaw. And if they block, then I use the Flare of Fate. It's fine. But now I get a trigger for the Outlaw, which will be nice in this race situation. And also gain, of course, some life from the Wedge Run in here. Now I don't have to care about the 2-2 two, two Decayed Zombies that much, because I will get some incidental life gain here. But now if they play something like an Organ Order, <laughs> That's really annoying because it's just uh, gonna trade with my arrogant outlaw and they still get the card there. That's a really good common. I think it should be only a 2 2. Okay, so no spells and I did manage to draw another spell. Won't be that useful right now, but um, let's first see what they're gonna do. They could have the form on a bounce effect, could easily have it. Uh, midnight Ambush. It is not night now, it is day. So this Flare of Fate will save it. It will give plus two, plus two. It's, it's a vampire, but it's all I need. Let's do it. They have more. What do they have? <laughs> Infernal Crash. Well, that was a two for two. I don't mind that to be the case. I think it might be time for the... No, I will wait for some, uh, something else for the Candle Trap. I guess I can take two here. So they had some decent removal. I guess the duress is, is a card I might put in my side, uh, in my deck from the sideboard. That's a lot of non-creatures that are really high impact. Okay, they, they, now they land here. So I have drawn five cards. Okay, two of them were lands. So that's really a regular, a regular um, amount of spells and lands. But of course, because I initially kept five lands and two spells, it's gonna hurt me now. Okay, well that's something I will use. But oh, time on. Okay, the Griff. A bit inconvenient timing. But... Huh. They might easily have another removal spell, that's the problem here. But then again, even if I use the candle trap, they can still block with it. It has two toughness, this won't go through. So yeah, let's see how many more. Um, yeah, this is kind of wasted, this exile effect. That's that's the thing I don't like about this. Um, but 
I want to play my 3-4 flyer, because if they don't have anything, I'm of course holding the ground here, and then I can use my removal spells to continue the race. But they have played... Uh, okay, now there's the Organ Hoarder, yeah, this is a really good card. In any long game situation, it's gonna be such an annoying thing to deal with. A 3-2 three, three, is enough uh, meaningful stats. And the free card with selection is such a nice thing, especially when it can be in some stuff that are relevant in the graveyard as well. Did it happen this time though? But let's see... Okay, that's just a fading hope that they wanna raise me. I'm gonna get it back, but there's nothing in the graveyard I care about. Um, so six, I will have a seven, I will have seven. Land, so I can't double spell. Not that I was ever going to borrow time this organ hoarder. I will maybe use it on the Gale Drifter at some point. They have only one card, so maybe it's time to see if they have even more removal. I still don't like to use this when they have no disturb creatures there or, for, or flashback spells, but what can you do? So, no attacks. If they have nothing, they don't have a good attacks. Of course, if they have anything, but it's just one card. Do they still have interaction? Because they have uh, had three pieces of interaction in this game so far. That doesn't do it. Now that does give them a big army though. So I need some <laughs> creatures there. Borrowed time isn't going to be enough now. I have the candle trap too though. Well, here we go. I mean... It is pretty obvious that if they have something, I'm I'm lost. So I'm not taking I'm not taking the eight damage. That's just the way to lose the game. They might just hope I have most land and uh, they want to push some damage through. But I can't block the Gale Drifter because the, there's nothing to exile it from the graveyard. So if I want to block the Crowned Guy, the thing is that I can block this with any creature I draw. That is the thing here. So I'm kind of tempted to kill the flyer here and then exile this guy. Maybe put the candle trap on the abomination. Can take six, maybe I can gain more life with from this thing. Fine, yeah, let's let's take the six and see what happens. Loyal Grief is it's not bad. Not bad, not not particularly useful either. Um so can I raise here? Can I attack with the soul card? But I can do, I can attack with it and return it with the loyal grief and recast it. That might be something I can do. I also will gain two life in the process. This will be untapped in that case. And if they don't have anything, they still don't have a good attack. Other option is to just uh, use my removal spells and the grief. Well, that said, the grief does. I mean, that can. Well, no, no matter what I do, I'm going to attack with uh, this guy, I think. Oh, they have a 4 mana instant spell. Or up to 4 mana. All right then, well, let's see what it is. Yeah, they most likely have their form and a bounce thing. Well, that, that, that kind of changes things a bit. That does change things. So I'm gonna use the Loyal Grief as an instant, instant speed effect in that case. Yes, I am. Alright, so let's use this first, see what happens when I do this thing. Gale Drifter, bye-bye for now. And I think I should play the Candle Trap. And who knows, maybe I will use it on the... Well, if they have a bounce spell, I don't want them to bounce the organ Hoarder. Yeah, I'm gonna put it on the flyer here. Okay, they didn't do anything yet. 
Okay, so let's see how it goes then. Secrets of the key. All right, uh, that's some amount of card draw, and yep, it's gonna be a lot of cards drawn in a couple of turns. But I am also very close to finishing them in the air because what I can do is I simply, uh, I guess I can even jump block with the lunar veteran here and then return it. Now yeah, that makes sense. Now they have of course the instant speed effect in here. Okay, locked in the cemetery. Well, oh man, look at this. The Loyal Griff would have had a very, very good target in there. Okay, it's still fine because I did draw a good card and I have the Coven. I can get rid of this thing just in case and I can... Um, I can try to raise them actually. Well, let's do this thing first. I want to gain the life from that. I will use this also just to make sure it... And I can actually also do that. Get the planes here and uh, do the... Have this thing and now the question is, am I going to go down the three? They don't have mana to cast this though now that they have only three there. So I should be racing because if they attack I have the season to Qatar here anyway and I might want to maybe just jump block with that thing and if I don't attack with this that would mean I'm gonna trade with the organ hoarder and I don't like that so they will get a couple of clue tokens they probably will sacrifice one of them and now they can play up to uh, they can play a two or three mana spell here uh, three if they have a land in hand and uh, if they attack I'm not blocking I'm, I'm attacking for three here lifelink okay this is going to be good for a multiple reasons. Now... Okay, I am actually having a lot of... I have used a lot of time here. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to just attack, offer the trade. If they want to eat the Lunar Veteran, that's fine. I guess they are going to just block the Cathar here. That's acceptable to me. And then end of turn I can play the Cathar Commando and maybe free up the Grief. I don't have to give them that information right now. They draw another card and then they will have a draw step. So that's going to mean three cards in their hand. But I have a three two flyer, after three four flyer I mean. Okay, that's not happening. It's not gonna become a knight now. So let's do this because that allows me to threaten Lethal. They have only one card in their hand. Is that the dissipate? If it is, they have to do it right now. That was something that didn't do anything. That's all right. Okay, so I could get a two win result still out of this deck, which I think would be a win. Um, maybe my I didn't draft the colors that I should have drafted in the draft because this is a fairly low quality deck and in the draft there were good cards going around all right I'm on the play here pretty slow hand but with the mirror I can get it going early on and I, I, I might have some excess lands to discard anyway the opponent is also malig mulliganing here a loller pawn here all right Silver bolt. Okay. Hmm. So if they kill this target creature or planeswalker, well, I guess they didn't. They didn't just kill it. So I'm gonna play this because it can attack, and uh, I can the next turn anyway use the mirror to play and discard. 
a card. Okay, that's actually something for the blade brand. On on the other hand, um, I just rather have the mirror going, especially when I drew the land. That will be pretty irrelevant. So let's get rid of that. Okay, and I milled the land. That's good too. Um, now this is. I mean, killing this is not the greatest value because they will have a six mana four four flyer. Which this can't block, by the way. Mm. So now I should. Yeah, the Outrider is fine, but I mean, this is a better plan. I can use the Mirror and the Search Body Captain when I attack with this thing. I can't imagine them trading here. They just take this, which is, you know, making perfect sense, of course. And then I will first. This is Colorless Mana, right? I'm going to play your land here this turn anyway, so I might as well leave a white mana up because I have some white one drops. Let's do it like this and then most likely discard the swamp for the mirror. It's a sorcery speed thing, so I will have to do it right now and then the next one gives me a flyer. And I have something I can use to block the witch unless they get the coven. Well, it's not going to be a big problem. They need a one or three or four power creature basically. Brutal Cathar. I milled another land. Okay, I have eight. That's good because I don't need that many lands in here. But I need to have some nonsense to discard for this thing. But I could easily get rid of the uh, blade brand in here. Cathar Commando. Right. So. I kind of like the Many Sky slightly more than, than the Brutal Cathar. But am I going to lose the... No, I actually do like suddenly the Blade Brand quite a bit here, in fact. I want to see what I draw. I, I don't currently want to actually discard any of these things. The Cathar Commando is the least useful one. Oh, but this thing is a werewolf, so this will kill it anyway. It will kill this too, though, so I have to offer some something for it. Maybe I want to have the Autrix Outrider happen first. Actually, let's play this thing so when people start dying here, uh, I get some counters, unless they get rid of this. This is not a werewolf, and this takes 3 damage, so they can't... Uh, use a silver bolt to kill the outrider, but I hadn't. You know, I didn't have that big of a hurry to play my demon here. The game is in a bit of a, a weird spot right now. So what I'm doing here? They have. They didn't play anything. Um. Yeah, this is not a werewolf. I <laughs> actually first thing in the world. Why didn't this transform? Well, because it's not a werewolf, that's why. Because if it was, it would have been a day that turned into a night. Right, so... Um, I could attack with all of these guys. With the plate brand. I mean, if they didn't have mana open, this would be a fantastic attack with all. Uh, but because they do, and they already have also have an onboard trick, it's not really going to do anything good for me. I might get rid of but I don't want to get rid of any of my cards right now maybe I'll just play the traveler it's gonna offer them such a good way to use mana for that thing but whatever I want to get rid of the silver bolt no matter what before I'm gonna play the Cathar and now the entire point with the Adrix Outrider was of course that I have one timeout I can still discard maybe I will just do this okay fine I don't need the commando I, I, don't, I don't know why did I do it in this order, because I could play under something else that, that costs 3. But I would have played the Sadie Traveler anyway. No, no, yeah, but I was saying that now, because I have the Outrider here, if they kill the Traveler, at least I will get the counter from the Outrider. And the counter will be given to, I think, the Search Party Captain is the card that I least care about. So, as long as the Outrider stays alive, it will be doing good stuff, so I don't want to give the counter to that. Okay, so now the same story for this thing. And now they are, in fact, almost tapped out. 
So uh, I could get some value out of the plate brand now. Yeah, I don't care even if they double block the Outrider here. I will play Brand and kill both of these. They will still have the Disturb creature, but oh well. Then they do. We can play this thing for cheap and... Uh, yeah, okay, I'm not a big fan of losing the Outrider, but then again, it's just one card. If I get a two for one from it, because Blade Brand replaces itself, so that's gonna be reasonable enough. And if they double block the yeah, search party captain, that would have been even better for me. And I'm gonna give a counter to whom? Oh, my blade brand tapping was just fantastically bad. Oh man. I should have paid attention to the auto tapper because I don't need any of these swamps as uh, black mana. I could have double spelled this turn. Oh well, that is what it was is then. Alright, so I'm thinking about the strangler is not that. Although I might use the Cathar on the beggar. Mm, well, let's have a 5 5. Maybe they have a removal on it, then they do. Who knows, maybe I draw a, a place. Yeah, I would have the, this thing and I would have gained one life bit from this, but I don't think the life matters too much actually. But the ice steel should have just manually tapped two of those. But hey, this is actually looking good because I did draw a number of different kind of stuff in here. I'm going to think. I'm gonna play the Cathar now. And then I can have the ambitious. Actually, can I do that all? If I do this now in a smart way. Let's see, I think I can. So I play this first, then I get the. Yeah, this works now. Maximize everything here. Like I said, I don't think the life from the veteran matters too much, but uh, at least I now did things in an optimal way. And they will take seven here. They are now at nine. They have only one blocker against my team of creatures. I do have a coven thanks to the 5-5 five five here. So if they can't deal with it, this is going to be a... Okay, so I guess I'll just... Uh... I mean, I have the Flare of Fate and all. I can't do this and the activation here and the Flare of Fate though. If they block the 5-5 five, five and the 2-2 two, two here, that's 2. They have 2 mana up, that's the thing I'm scared about. So if they block the 5-5 five, five and the 2-2, two, two, this is 3, 4, 5, 6, that's 8. So the Flare of Fate would be little but I guess it's just safer to do it like this right let's do it like this I don't necessarily need to use them for my oh they they have something there so that's good to know that is good to know they if they can uh, get rid of the Cathar mid combat with a bounce spell of something it's gonna be slightly annoying but I have the flare of fate here so I'm not going to do anything else than just attack with everyone right now the farmhand is available currently so let's see what, because of course they have to do something now. If they just some block the captain, and uh, do I do something? Because that won't be lethal. That would be 8 damage. Okay, well this would be lethal, so they have a bounce spell on the captain now. Or or whatever spell it might be. Fading hope. Okay, that can be played again with uh, one mana actually. It will draw me a card. And this is now 2, 4... Okay, well, this is lethal if I just use this, so let's do it like that.
All right, so what did I learn? Blue and white, there's a silver bolt. It's not that bad against my deck. I don't have any expensive big werewolves. They have to use four mana total to deal with. Something that I use mostly, well, usually like three or maybe even four mana, but it's fine. Main deck Sun Gold Barrage. Well, it has some uses against my deck. Um, Fading Hope. Small creatures. I did show, show them my Flare of Fate here. Uh, they have bounce again, so the Elum Mirror isn't that exciting, but... I don't really know. Maybe it's not that bad. There is the looting aspect. Well, it's not looting, it's rummaging, but... You know what I mean. Uh, I feel like the 3-2 might be worth something here, maybe. Not sure though. Not sure at all. What do I not want to have? They also know about the blade brand now. Mm. Yeah, maybe... This is not the greatest against the bounce spell, for instance. I think I'll try maybe the card draw spell. Let's see how bad it is. <laughs> I'll take it. Hmm, again one of these hands. I already kept one of these and I immediately draw the swamp there. Now this is a bit different. Because this is a really, really good hand if I draw a swamp. So what, what the heck, let's go. Um, I have two spells I can all, all, always play here on turns one and two. And if I happen to draw a swamp here, that would be such a good news. And that's not a bad one because now even if I draw a planes as my third land, I have a three drop here available. Okay, so let's disturb. I should have played the 3-1 first. Well, no, no matter. Let's do this. Uh, the problem, of course, is that they do have a 1-2 flyer here. Yeah, these, these two. Yeah, that, that thing beats my thing. <laughs> okay, let's see if they have want to use two mana this turn for it. Maybe I can attack for one. Nope. So, um... Okay, I'm gonna trap her. All right. Okay, so no swamp and no lands of any kind. That's really, of course, bad. But I still have a spell I can play. Um, if I'm very lucky, they have a they have the thing that says it's cheaper when they attack. So I could they could have blocked that guy if they attacked with it with this thing. Although they could have killed my camo commander there. Well, maybe they will block and I at least get to use my Flare of Faith here. No, no such luck. I wish this was the 4-drop that would have cost now 2 mana because I attacked with 2 guys. Yeah, this is just, I mean I drew 4 cards, none of them was any land. And they have a normal curve when they use all the mana all the time and have a Pretty good four drop for the situation at hand, so can't really think that my chances are very good here. Now, with all this stuff, am I going to? Because they can use the silver bolt to kill some of my stuff, so I think I'll just need to get rid of the witch and then threaten the block here or force them to use the tapper or whatever. Yeah, let's use the burrow time on the 3-3, maybe. And this guy is not blocking anyone, so let's just attack. If the opponent, like, has only lands from now on, this wouldn't be that bad. I 
get even a point of life. Just don't play an organ donor. No, no, it's not a donor. <laughs> oh, it's a hoarder. Gale Drifter. Oh, that's not nice either. Yeah, the D-step creatures are nasty value. Alright, so... Because I wouldn't mind trading a trick for it. But I do care about... Um, I mean, they, they will get a 2-2 two, two flyer out of that. That said, I might still play the Cavernous Illusmith and attack for, for 2 here. No, I wouldn't be attacking for 2. They would attack back for 5. But the Loyal Groove, yeah, it can recap. I mean, I can get the Lunak Veteran back with it, of course. But I don't know it's something I want to necessarily even do here. I am pretty, pretty nastily behind here. I guess I'll just do this and try to somehow find a way to win them in the race. Maybe I'll just force them to use the silver bolt if they want to attack with it. They might just trade with it, of course. Yeah, I'm not taking five. Fine. They also have the tapper, so... I'll try to block the Gale Drifter, but they have other plans for that. And now they have a tapper available to conveniently. I have my grief and um, let's first try to attack. They might not even tap it because I might have a flying blocker here, but they don't care about such a possibility. Good for them because I don't really have that great stuff going on. I do want to have the drain with these things. I'm going to play the interloper, which can't even block, and then have the flash blocker. I guess with the Flare of Fate, I might have considered just not playing anything. Oh, whatever. It's too late anyway. If they tap it before blocks, that might be one way I can find some weird way to win here, but they really don't care about such things. At least they will have to tap 5 mana to get the 2-2. Two -two. In which case the trapper won't be able to be used. And now I it's my it is my I can double spell. But the, because I wanna play the outlaw here. But I don't know. Well let's just attack with these guys. I mean I can attack for uh eight here if I want to, but it's not lethal, even if I get the drain here. I think this is still the best chance I have. Because next turn I, I might not... I wanna maybe... If I don't draw land, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to save this. It would be nice, but uh, I might not draw land. I might want to play the Silversmith or something like that. Okay, they still have, of course, stuff to deal with all this. So they can make the... Uh, okay, they, they definitely have something <laughs> there. Well, I'm dying anyway to their attack. I have nothing that prevents me from losing, so let's just do the best I can. But they, of course, have something else than just the tapper there, so... Um, yep. The barrage. And they have, yeah, they have the tapper of course too. Even if they didn't have mana to tap, they still would have been able to uh, just jump block with it. Uh, that said, if I had one more life, who knows what would have happened. But I didn't, so I lose to the flyers. They have this thing can't block, so there's no no preventing from uh, them getting the win. Yeah, these, these <laughs> disturbed creatures, they really... And that is two cards in one if you have the time to use all that mana for it. I really don't like these because the 1-1 one, one flyer against that deck doesn't do a whole lot. They have too many disturbed creatures with um, toughness more than one for the spirit side. So maybe the ritual guardian in the end. Maybe the blood pact won't be that good. How about the lunak veteran? Isn't 
isn't that quite bad actually because even the flyer won't do a whole lot. I think I'm gonna ignore it now. This might not be the matchup where I want to have it. Yep. I'll try with the Blood Pact and the Ritual Guardian here. How about the Blade Brand? It's a bit risky card to run, run here. No, I won't be playing it. Ah, oh, come on. Ah, why do I have so many of these, these kind of starting hands? This is again would be very good if I draw, especially a planes. And I'm gonna take the risk because the opponent's deck is good against me. I have two spells I can play. If I just can play a arrogant outlaw on turn three, that would be great. Of course, even greater if I get to play it from a planes because I want to draw the planes there, but. Let's just see if or do they have a bounce spell that they want to use right away. They do have the bounce spell definitely, but they didn't want to use it now. Come on, land. Yeah, well that is that is better than you know not drawing a land at all. But definitely I will need a place. The good news of course is that when I draw a place, this will get me another one. So Rain will happen. They didn't have a two drop. They have a bounce spell, which they might. Okay, Fateful Mending actually. Well, that's going to just use up their turn. They get two cards. No disturb creatures here, so they only discarded a couple of lands. Okay, that is good news. I will play the planes because I might want to use a uh, Fate, uh, Flare of Fate. And this would be a nice one to play pre combat, but not into open mana when I suspect they have the bounce spell. And I have a perfect uh, place available for this turn with the farm hand and the Vengeful Strand. I guess I'm gonna play this first. If they have a counter spell, maybe they play this, counter this instead. They know nothing, so they haven't really done a whole lot right now. I guess they have the Fateful Mending here, but. Not really a card I care about here too much. So that, that that's what they chose to bounce. Sure. Oh, do they have a rat effect? Well, if they had a rat effect, they wouldn't be bouncing anything. So no. And the white rat would require um, more creatures on the battlefield. I mean, it would cost four minus the number of creatures on the battlefield, so... They could play it for four mana if there was, if there were four creatures. But they have another, oh, multiple fading hopes. So, okay, that's not really. That's like okay. I mean, that's not a very defensive card. So, definitely attacking with the interloper, and if they don't block it, ah. Uh, I will get my trigger for the arrogant outlaw, and if they block it, that's that's actually quite fine. Even if they get the get the two, uh, the five mana card. But now what I can do, I can play the well. Actually, I'm still playing these. I'm still playing this. Now, should I have considered the Flare of Fate somehow attack with Bow to use it? I guess that wasn't an option there. I didn't really consider it. But that was an option. Attack with Bow, use the Flare of Fate when they block the 1-1 one, one, and then still have the Arrogant Outlaw with the... Uh, with the, um, a, a trigger happening. That actually would have been a better play. Candle Trap, they still have the Silver Bolt up. Now, I have a Flare of Fate, and none of these guys is a Werewolf, so I can do what I can do. I can play the Silver Smith here. And give something like a. I do want to have the. 
how it happens. So if I give this a counter and this thing a counter, I will have a 2, 3, 3, 2. So I <laughs> sort of don't want to do that. So I think I'm going to do it in, in this way instead. Now I have 1, 3, 3. Oh, that's still not going to work. Is it? <laughs> so no matter what I do, common won't happen here. Oh well. Oh well, let's maximize the damage in that case. <laughs> Both our humans, they get indestructible and plus three plus three. And I will definitely respond with the flare here. So they go down to 5 now. And this thing is a 5 mana thing, won't be that good at all. And if I draw something with... Well, I mean, it's not gonna be easy to draw a creature that does give me the coven. Sadly, but... <laughs> I guess they can't even block the farmhand now. And this is gonna be a perfect one. They're gonna block the strangler. Because that's the, what they have to do, they go to one and I get a counter on up. On up, well... Well, it's going to be on... <laughs> okay, it's the silversmith, I guess. I still don't have the common. But I have also three lethal attackers into their nothing. They can get two life and draw two and discard two, but they have only three mana left, so I think this... Unless they have a, an Axel of Rat effect. Should be in the books now. Memory Deluge, which is a good card, but also a lot of tempo. Tempo is going to waste here. Alright, so <laughs> I was able to get the second match win after f losing the first one. And I think, yeah, like I said, for this deck, this definitely was a fairly acceptable result. It's um, It seems like there were a lot of strong cards in the draft for the colors I wasn't drafting. And maybe I should have been green. Maybe from the pack one, I picked the five mana uncommon. It's just that my previous draft, I had five of those uh, green uncommons. Uh, werewolves that become what, like eight, seven. So I didn't want to go that route again. And I wanted to try the... Uh, the aggressive archetype, I haven't done it yet, but I think the Wolverine Stingers are the key commons for it. Any, I guess it works with black, red, and white, red. Uh, the kind of very ag aggressive archetype that can use pump effects and maybe even the red thing uh, where it is abandoned. The post seems like a could be useful in the correct deck. Uh, but the white turned out to be very open, and then the other colors. Well, at least black wasn't that open, but. Yep, and th that was a funny, uh, I mean, I should really start paying attention to the Loyal Grief. Both are Griefs too, and they look very similar cards. Of course, this one is a spirit, has this white glow around it, and this doesn't. But I really thought this was the 3-4 when I picked it. So let's try to not make that mistake again. Yep, so not a great deck, but um, still a decent result. Claim the prize here, and uh, I think the next one will still be a traditional draft. Um, because it, I might still be able to play it before the season. Oh, maybe it, because it's... Okay, no matter what. I, I'm, I'm not sure. It might be a premier, it might be a traditional draft. But any, some kind of draft anyway will be uh, the next video. And uh, I will see you then. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.